big flare players return, which means radio blackouts are back. And a small set of coronal holes are going to give us a big chance for Aurora. Those stories and more are in the news this week. Space weather this week is picking up in a very interesting way. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, I haven't started rotating this because I want you to pay attention to this longitude right about here because everything was really quiet on the disk. We didn't have a lot of big flares until these regions started rotating into this hot longitude. In fact, you can see that eruption right there. We don't typically get eruptions coming out of coronal holes, so that tells you something's up with this longitude. And then watch as region 4098 begins to rotate right past it. Notice the flare activity. Notice it started growing. In fact, as we got late on the 24th into the 25th, we really started firing big solar flares. There's one big one. We have a big, that was a big X-class flare. Boom, there's another big one. We have one more boom right there. That one was also a near X-class flare. So we've had R2 to R3 level radio blackouts over the last 24 hours. And believe it or not, as this region continues to rotate to the west limb, I'm not exactly sure that the big flares are going to die down because our Already, region 4094 is beginning to show that it's getting a little bit active, and we could have some activity from region 4092 and 4093 as they continue to rotate through that hot longitude. So be aware that radio blackouts may continue to stay with us here over the next few days. And if this region here has anything to do with it, this is old region 4081. We'll talk more about it in a minute. This could be a big flare player as well. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect to stay, have radio blackouts stay on the menu you likely for the rest of this week. Now, Aurora photographers, we also have this coronal hole. And believe it or not, despite being much smaller than this one was, this one has the proper polarity to give us a bit of a storm. So expect that we could bump up to minor storm conditions here latter part of this week. Now, as I switch to our far-sighted sun, this is Stereo A. We're back to looking at Stereo A imagery because Stereo A has finally shifted far enough to the sun's uh, far so that we can kind of peek around the corner. In fact, you can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun uh, just a bit from the side. And look at this massively big <laughs> coronal hole that gave us Basically nothing when it came to big solar storming is kind of a letdown this time. It's too far south and it's the wrong polarity. But you can kind of orient yourself. You can see region 4098 as it really begins to start growing here. Look how fast this thing grows. And it really begins to fire those big solar flares uh, starting around the 25th. You can see it just pop, 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 pop. But meanwhile, region 4095 has not been all that active. So really only 4098 has been, you know, has been a big issue and we'll continue need to watch it on the sun's far side. We'll see how long it remains active, but it might kind of quiet back down. And now as we switch to our full sun map, this is SDO AIA as well as solar orbiter EUI imagery. We can see the SDO AIA imagery. This is the front side of the sun here in red. And then this is solar orbiter EUI imagery on the far side because solar orbiter is actually looking at the sun's far side right now. And this is great because it allows us to have a full view of what's going on on our sun right now. And you can see here's region 49 98 kind of firing some really big solar flares that should kind of give you a kind of calibrate you as to let you know where you are on the sun. But take a look at the east limb. So this is just barely out of, of Earth's view. This is old region 4081. This is the one that looks really ominous coming around the east limb. This was a bit of a player last time, but what's interesting is that you're seeing a bit of growth here in this region right next to it. So as region 4099 comes in, 4081 comes in, we also have 4086 behind it and another new region. So over the next three to five days, we should be seeing a bit of new activity rotate into Earth view from the sun's far side. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect that those big radio blackouts aren't going to go away anytime soon. Not expecting necessarily R3 level radio blackouts, but R1 to R2 are definitely on the menu. And now stepping outside to look at our current conditions with our global geochron map, taking a look at the aurora, you can see it's really not all that strong right now, hasn't been affecting radio communication at all, and the main reason is because we just haven't had any fast solar wind or any big solar storms hitting us, and that's likely going to continue easily over the next couple days. As we turn and we take a look at our ROT, our, our scintillation uh, risk for GPS and GNSS signals, also not doing too badly. Got a little, a few pockets here and there, 
especially on uh, Earth's night side, but not too much on the day side. So those higher frequencies are doing okay, like in the L band, you guys are doing okay for now. However, as we switch to our HF and we take a look at those frequencies, the D wrap is lighting up like a Christmas tree. And this is because of those R2 to R3 level radio blackouts. In fact, I've got a, a map down here where you can see where the big solar flares are over the last 24 hours. In fact, there is one right there. This actually did have an impact uh, on radio frequencies. This was the R3 level radio blackout that happened just at the beginning of the 25th. You can see it right there. But things kind of calmed down a little bit. But these pops are, even though they're short lived, they are still causing issues for you HF uh, radio operators. Here's another one right here. I'll back up just a little bit. Not too bad of a pop, but you can see get a little bit more uh, short range here uh, during during the peak of this particular uh, radio blackout, which was in this case an, a high R2 level radio blackout. So understand that this is likely going to continue over the next couple days, uh, possibly a little bit longer. And so HF radio operators expect some extra noise on the bands this week, as well as these radio blackouts. It's not your rig. It's just the sun. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase on our way to a first quarter. And by the first, the moon will only be about 33% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, well, now is your perfect chance. Now, switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating some fast solar wind starting around the 28th from that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active to possibly minor storm conditions with up to about a 25% chance of major storm at high latitudes. So aurora photographers, if you are at high latitudes, you could get a nice showing. Uh, so definitely enjoy through the 28th and possibly in through the 30th before things calm down. Now, mid latitudes, while well, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we might see active conditions right around the 29th. NOAA's giving us about a 15% chance of minor storm conditions starting around the 28th, maybe bump that up just a little bit by the 29th, but things will definitely calm down after that. Of course, with all of these radio blackouts and big solar flares popping off, well, that those conditions could change quickly if we get a big Earth-directed solar storm. But right now, the aurora is just because of the fast solar wind that we're expecting. So uh, aurora photographers, enjoy the opportunity. And if you're at mid-latitudes, probably only if you're dedicated should you really chase. Now, switching to our uh, radio or solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week. Well, we are sitting here now about the mid 130s for solar flux. So we've bumped up a bit, and that's because of the big flare players uh, in Earth view right now. Uh, NOAA is expecting moderate noise on the bands. Are so expecting about a 65% chance of R1 to R2 level radio blackout, and right now about a 25% chance of X class flares. That's going to be over the next three days. Then things will probably calm down just a little bit. We're going to probably calm down to 15%, maybe even 10% chance of X-class flares, but likely not going to go away. And I'm thinking that's the, because we're going to have other uh, big regions rotating into that, that hot longitude and causing big solar flares. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, stay on your toes this week because there's probably going to be a lot of noise on the bands as well as these radio blackouts. And now as we switch to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, well, everything is in the green this week. We're sitting at the D1 normal range. This is at flight level 360 for you aviators. Is also the S0 quiet range for everybody else. NOAA is giving us about a 10% chance of an S1 or S2 uh, level radiation storm over the next few days. That's likely going to calm down just a little bit as we move into Thursday and Friday. Things could probably settle down a bit, but then next week things may rise again. It all depends upon what these big solar, uh, big, big X flare players do and uh, uh, the new ones as they rotate into Earth view. So aviators, looks like you're all in the green right now, but always pay attention to those ICAO advisories because things could change quite quickly. So the space weather this week is getting kind of exciting. We do have some fast wind from coronal holes, a set of coronal holes that's going to give us a bit of aurora show. Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you definitely could get a chance to chase. If you're at mid latitudes, well, take it easy. It may only be a mild storm, so only if you're dedicated should you chase. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, yes, radio blackouts are back, and they're going to likely continue to be a nuisance for you over the next few days, possibly through the rest 
rest of this week before things begin to calm down. It really depends upon what we see uh, with at, as regions rotate through that hot longitude. So just kind of grin and bear it for a bit. And now you GPS users, well, things aren't great on the day side because of the radio blackouts and things aren't going to be great starting around the 28th because of aurora and that fast solar wind. So you're going to need to stay vigilant pretty much all the way around the globe, especially anywhere near dawn or near dusk, and of course, anywhere near aurora. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.